Coming up on today's Airborne, the East Hampton Town Board looks to gouge general aviation with 100% fee increase from FBOs. Analysts estimate 1,000 airliners a year will leave service by 2023. And Innovation Center is to host seven emerging tech companies at AirVenture. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The town board in East Hampton, New York, has proposed a 100% increase in a fuel flowage fee charged to FBOs when they purchase fuel from the town. Under the proposal, the fee would go up from 15 cents to 30 cents per gallon. Such an increase would put FBO Sound Aircraft Services out of business in the next few years. This according to a spokesperson for the business. It's reported that the town owns the fuel farm from which the two FBOs at East Hampton Airport draw fuel. The town says it has not raised the fees since the early 1990s, but the price of fuel has continued to rise. The town collected over $115,000 in fuel flowage fees last year along with nearly $1 million in landing fees and over $625,000 in rental income at the airport. The town maintains that they need the money for maintenance on the fuel farm. Raising the fees, the board said, would also help the town make improvements at the airport without having to rely on FAA AIP grants. Apparently, the board members don't understand that pilots can simply choose to buy fuel at other airports. Richard Brown, ICF International Principal, told delegates attending the Aircraft Fleet Recycling Association's annual meeting taking place in Washington that airliner retirements will reach a stunning 1,000 aircraft a year within a decade. Brown said, quote, The combination of demographics as aircraft reach the end of their economic life, low interest rates, relatively high fuel prices, and the introduction of new models is causing the retirement of unprecedented numbers of aircraft, while new technology and OEM production rates are also exacerbating aircraft retirements." End quote. Julie Felger, Boeing Commercial Airplanes Managing Director of Environment Safety, told AFRA delegates that a wave of aircraft retirements is coming, with 41% of today's fleet leaving service in the next 20 years as airlines procure more fuel-efficient airplanes. AFRA has developed an environmentally friendly accreditation program for disposing of airliners after they have been retired from active service. The goal is to establish a production recycling system rather than just parking them in the desert. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Seven emerging tech companies will be showcasing their newest ideas for aviation this summer at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh as part of the event's EAA Innovation Center. The exhibits range from new aircraft designs to the latest in power systems and 3D printing for airplane parts. EAA's chairman of the board, Jack Pelton, said, quote, For more than a half a century, the latest in aircraft design and technology has been introduced to the flying community and the public at the EAA fly-in. EAA has reached out to nearly 40 inventors and emerging companies inviting them to send ideas on what they'd like to showcase at Oshkosh this year. These seven were selected as among the best and most intriguing of the hundreds of concepts that come from the bright minds in the aviation community each year." End quote. The Innovation Center is located in EAA College Park, just northwest of the FAA Control Tower. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. 
In this video, you'll be sitting on top of the world in a dragon lady at 70,000 feet. It's quite a view. Search U2 Spy Plane Cockpit View on YouTube. The all-volunteer Wright B. Flyer Incorporated will bring aviation history to life June 28th through the 29th at the Vectran Dayton Air Show. The nonprofit organization flies a one-of-a-kind modern look-alike of a Wright Model B airplane produced by the Wright Company in Dayton beginning in 1910. The lookalike is based on a modified 1911 Model B, now on display in the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. Built to modern airworthiness standards, the airplane is designed to look like an original Wright Model B to spectators in an airshow crowd, reflecting the heritage of the city where the Wright brothers invented, developed, and commercialized the airplane. The Wright Model B will fly near the beginning of the show each day and then go on display where spectators can see the airplane up close and talk to its pilots and crew chiefs. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. The past and future overlap recently on a land-based test site at Joint Base McGuire-Dix, Lakehurst, New Jersey, when the near-silent armature of the U.S. Navy's new electromagnetic aircraft launch system propelled an FA-18C Hornet. A similar system had been experimented with in 1945, but was set aside in favor of the steam catapult most commonly in use today. EMALS is replacing the steam launch system beginning with the new Ford-class carriers. The USS General R. Ford is under construction at the Huntington Ingalls Industries Shipyard in Newport News, Virginia. EMALS is a system designed to expand the operational capability of the Navy's future carriers to include all current and future planned carrier aircraft from lightweight unmanned drones to heavy strike fighters. It delivers substantial improvements in system maintenance, increased reliability and efficiency, and more accurate in-speed control with a smooth acceleration at both high and low speeds. This is an incident that falls into the category of some days it just doesn't pay to get out of bed in the morning. A man on a Cathay Pacific flight from Newark, New Jersey to Hong Kong spent the last hour of the 15-hour flight in rather uncomfortable conditions, standing up in one of the airplane's laboratories. The passenger, identified only as a 32-year-old American, reportedly got his finger stuck in the trash bin in the laboratory and was unable to free himself. The London Telegraph reports that the man had to stand alone in the small space for the final hour of the flight, including the landing. Once the plane arrived in Hong Kong, firefighters were able to help him get his hand out of the trash bin. The takeaway here is, we suppose, be careful when you're throwing something away on board an airliner. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.